We have with us a guest who's ideally suited to respond to Mr. Biden trying to move on. That lady is Kayleigh McEnany, who worked under President Trump. Tell me this. When you were working, do, do, do you think that this strategy of moving on and changing the subject. Is it going to work for the president? No, it's not going to work. Look, ordinarily for a Democrat president, I would say yes. Uh, the press never let President Trump move on from anything. Democrat presidents usually fare better on that front. But with a situation like Afghanistan, where you hit the nail on the head, we're learning the faces and the names of these Americans left behind. A pregnant girl who tried to get to the airport, oh. stranded. Yeah. A mother of three who managed to make it out through no help of the federal government. So, you know, you know it's bad in Afghanistan when he's pivoting, as you pointed out to inflation, a stagnant economy. These are not good issues for him. Crime on the streets, whatever he tries to pivot to, COVID resurgence. Um, he's trying to pivot from one disaster to another. Yet yeah, the pivot is not easy, is yeah. it? No. Listen to this. It's, uh, it's from Politico's, the, uh, it's the Politico's West Wing playbook. And it says, here I'm quoting, when Biden gives public remarks, some White House staffers will either mute him or turn off his remarks. They're filled with anxiety that he's going to take questions from the media and veer off the West Wing's carefully orchestrated messaging. Oi. Kayleigh, you work for Mr. Trump. Were you ever anxious when he walked out to meet the press? Did you ever mute the mic so you couldn't hear what he was saying? No, I never muted it. I saw this <laughs> headline and I was stunned by it. Um, there were days I definitely said to the president, hey, today maybe don't take questions. It's a tough news cycle, but he always relished those days the most, and I think he liked did taking he? questions. He did. You would sometimes say to him, watch out, Mr. President, it might be tough out there today. I, and he never withdrew, never came back? He would engage more, and those were the days when he'd call on Jim Acosta first. He loved it. But <laughs> really? look, he was always more... He He's a brilliant messenger, President Trump was. And it's funny, he always, the way he would pivot things, I'd often find weeks later, oh, that's why he did that. That made a lot of sense. He's a great communicator, unlike President Joe Biden. He also is very good at reading the political temperature, which I don't think Joe is very good at. And President Trump simply had enormous energy. Yes. The man worked constantly and yes. always had that bounce, always had that move. What an extraordinary contrast with President Biden, who really lacks energy. And I've been questioning his, his cognitive ability. It's a very difficult thing to talk about. Would you address that? Uh, yeah, look, yesterday he said something to the effect of tornadoes. We don't call them that anymore. I don't know what we call tornadoes now. I don't know what he meant by that. He also mentioned bringing down emissions by 2020. We yeah. are in the year 2021. Um, so his cognitive ability is certainly questionable. But you're right. Contrast that with President Trump. We were doing five-a-day rallies. I could barely keep my eyes open at the fifth one as I watched President Trump on stage, um, you know, as you mentioned, with gusto and energy. You know, uh, former President Trump has scheduled rallies in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, Iowa. Yes, he has. That raises some eyebrows. Iowa, early caucus state, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think the president, the former president, is up to? Look, you're going to uh, speculate for us, Kayla. The standard line is he's focusing on the midterms in 2022, <laughs> which he certainly is. But hey, I think uh, that Iowa rally is indicative and s signaling of something. I haven't spoken to him about that, but why else? Why, why would you go to Iowa for a huge rally if 2024 was not on your mind? Oh, you are hinting <laughs> at a run in 2024. Hey, I, I, I think that it is a good bet, but that is my guess. I have not spoken to him about it. I better leave it right there before <laughs> we get into serious trouble. Yes. Katie, we're going to be watching you on Outnumbered today. Yes. That's 12 noon, Fox News Channel. You will be there and we'll be watching. Thanks, Katie. Thank you.